In today's video, I'm going to introduce you to the number one pouring medium in my acrylic pouring toolbox. And you just might be surprised at what it is. Every single effect that you can think of, this pouring medium provides. There really is no need to combine products to get multiple effects. Just have this one special product and you'll be on your way. Hello, my friend. Welcome back to another video and what a video it's going to be. I'm very excited to show you my number one all-time favorite pouring medium that I have in my acrylic pouring toolbox. I will be showing you how to mix these colors after, but let me just say I have five beautiful artist loft colors that I have mixed with this special pouring medium. And now I'm going to just add three drops of silicone to each of the colors except for the white. Silicone is optional. You do not need to use it. However, I love to use it because of the wild, crazy effects that it gives. Again, I will give you a step-by-step -step demonstration after we create this painting. But first, I'm creating four flip cups. So I just layer the paint in the cup, one on top of the other. I started off with white, added some blue, added some teal, added some purple, added a little white to separate the purple from the magenta, and then ended with some hot pink. I repeated this order two times in the cup until it was almost full. So I ended up making five flip cups, although I didn't use the fifth. I then came in with my Artist Loft white paint, then down with my favorite pouring medium, and poured a large puddle in the center of the canvas. I then tilted the canvas around until it was fully covered. Although I go over this in the second half of the video, I just want to let you know that I do have a consistency video in the description of this video. All you have to do is click on the link with the little YouTube sign and it will take you to that video and teach you all about consistency and how to thin your paints. So as you can see, my first flip cup was a total flop. <laughs> I just like dumped the paint out on the canvas, but hey, it got there one way or the other. This second one was much better. It's very hard to do flip cups with paper cups because they tend to collapse. And it's just, as you'll see here, <laughs> very hard. Another enemy of mine for this painting was I filled the cups too high. So I would say fill them about three quarters of the way full and then you'll have a much easier time flipping them. So the next thing I did was I slowly dragged the cup down the canvas while gently lifting up a little bit. You don't want to lift up too much because then all of the paint will just come out. You want to kind of lift up a little bit and you'll feel it starting to flow out and then kind of drag down and do both of those motions at the same time and you'll get a nice streak of paint down the canvas. But did you notice that path on the right? Do you see those cells developing already? This pouring medium is my most favorite pouring medium out of all the pouring mediums. It gives you so many different effects. It is just bonkers. If you like the Floetrol look, the Liquitex pouring medium look, the uh, Bloom recipe look, this pouring medium provides them all. Okay, so this is where I always struggle. I had a plan in mind for today, but I went and did this, and oh my goodness, with a little bit of tweaking, I love this painting. I don't want to do anything more to it. So... This is so, so tempting to leave this alone because watch this. You ready? Watch like this area right here. Did you see that? Watch over here.
Is that not magic or what? Oh my goodness. You know what? I think I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to let it spread out on its own. Maybe, just maybe this, this one here on the end. And then there's one on the other end here. This one here. It's, did it come down all the way to the bottom like these two did? Hmm. Oh, I just love this. Especially when I do the torch part. Like it's going to add all this beautiful cells and lacing to it. What do I do? What do I do? I can tilt, but then I'm going to lose a lot of my cool cells down at the bottom. Look at this over here. This is the best pouring medium ever. I'm going to tell you what it is in a minute, but look at this. You get the look like when you dip a toothpick into silicone and dab it in the painting, that chameleon cell, you get those corn cob looking cells. You get a ton of lacing. You get average regular cells. You get bloom cells. It's like all in one. You get pouring medium cells. You get all of them. Look at this. Look at this. I mean, come on now. All right, let me try not to ruin this. Hold on a minute. I have noticed that this area is coming closer to the edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to torch it and I'm going to let it sit for a minute and see if it spreads on its own because it has gotten a lot closer. So it may just be moving down this way on its own. So yeah, let's torch. Some of this I don't want to torch. I don't want to have cells or anything around it. But we can kind of hopefully control. Keep them on the edge here. Look at that. That is so cool. So, so cool. Love this pouring medium. Absolutely love it. I'm going to leave it alone. Look, it's almost off the edge. I'm just going to let it spread naturally. It will level out and uh, yeah, we'll let it dry. Let's take a look, shall we? I mean, come on. I'm sure there are a ton of images in here like I see a little face poking out at me right there. See it? Oh, yeah. Longtime viewers of my channel know this pouring medium. Uh, it's bound to have some crazy things pop up in it. You know, the images. I've had fish. I've had faces. I've had crosses. I've had stars. I've had body parts, both female and male, if you get my drift. <laughs> and uh, it's just crazy. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Peekaboo. It's pretty creepy. Creepy and cool. At the same time, my lord. <laughs> anyway, you know, <laughs> let's go on. Let this dry. And uh, yeah. That's my painting for today. <laughs>
let me show you how I mixed the paints. So I'm out of white after this video and I need a bulk container of it. However, if you just want to make a small amount of this, use a smaller container. You don't have to use a big quart size container such as I am. These containers, however, I want to just tell you, when you go to like get Chinese food or soup from a place, you get these containers, wash them out good and save them. They are very handy. I have the lid for it, so whatever's left over, I could save for a future video. Questions I always get about that is how long does pre-mixed paint last for? Like how long will this last for? And I've used paints that were mixed a year ago and they're still good. So there really is no expiration date as long as you keep them sealed. And when you reopen them, just give them a good mix. So the brand I used for today for paint was Artist Loft brand. That's Michael's brand. All right. It's a lot cheaper than uh, some of the other brands. And when you're doing something like using a lot of white paint like we do or black for our base coats, you want to try to use something that's a little less expensive but gives you great results, right? You don't want to use crappy paint that's not going to work good. So this Artist Loft brand works really good. And what I do when I mix up paints is this, because I do not like to use measurements. First of all, they aren't necessary. And second of all, it can be very deceiving. And here is why. I have six different colors of this Artist Loft paint. I can give you measurements for this white paint, but their blue paint, if you mix up using these measurements that I'm using on this one, will not achieve the same exact consistency. So therefore, a good thing to use, a good tool is the consistency gauge, or as I call it, the consistency, consistency chart. And what that consistency chart is, is it's a piece of paper. I have a video on it, on how to use it. And it also has a link in that video in the description for you to print out your own consistency gauge slash chart. What it does is I mix my paint here in Connecticut. I put a dab of it on that chart and I'll show you this. I tilt it, I count to five, and you're gonna see what number it runs to. So you at home, where, wherever you are, can have one of these charts. You can try to mix your paints like I am today, put a drip test on that paper, tilt it. If it runs to the same number that mine did, you know your paint is the same consistency as mine. Here's one right here, okay? So again, this is the best way to go about learning consistency because like I said, different colors, depending on how they're made, some pigments are more dense than others and require a little more water or pouring medium. It, this is the foolproof way, okay? Um, I can tell you I'm using one part paint to one part pouring medium and then water to thin. That doesn't help you at all. So you can kind of follow along what I'm doing here, but then use this to make sure it's the same consistency as mine. So let me demonstrate for you. However much paint I have in there, I'm gonna put about the same amount of pouring medium. It does not be, need to be exact. It could be less, a little less, a little more. It will still work fine. Now, speaking of pouring mediums, this is my favorite all-time pouring medium right here artist loft brand it's hands down the best it's inexpensive compared to the others uh it produces some wild and crazy effects in the painting that i've never seen before and it almost makes effects that resemble flow trial effects Liquitex pouring medium effects and silicone effects all in one. So I love, love, love using this stuff. But what I will do now, like I said, I have the paint in the cup and I will put about the same amount and volume of the pouring medium. So I'll just go ahead and pour it in till it looks like it's the same amount as the paint. 
I'll mix those two together just like this. Okay, and then I will add my water. Now, you may be saying to yourself, well, how do I know how thin or thick I need the paint to be for each technique? That's where this video comes in handy again, because in that video, I show you all the different consistencies, all the different numbers for all the different techniques. So if you want to do a Dutch pour and you watch that video, you're going to learn that somewhere between a five and six is the good consistency. If you want to do the bloom technique, those paints should be somewhere between a number one and two. Pearl cell, somewhere between six and seven. And all the other techniques are about a, between a three and a four, okay? Those are the consistencies that artists are using on YouTube, generally speaking. But you'll find the occasional video where somebody will say, I'm doing a Dutch pour with bloom paints that are really, really thick. Well, yes, you can technically do them, but you need a blow dryer that's powerful enough to, to blow that thickness of a paint. So there's all kinds of confusing things out there for you, but the general guidelines to do a typical Dutch pour would be paints that were thinned down to a six or a seven, that were mixed with flow trial. Like there's the basic recipes and then there's people that add all kinds of things in to, to make their own recipes, okay? I know it's very confusing, but I have a lot of learning tutorials on my channel that will really help you if you're a beginner. So check out the basics, um, not the basics, the playlist. There's one called Back to Basics and under that category, You'll see all my videos where I'm teaching all of these techniques step by step, uh, going over things like pouring mediums, like all different kinds of videos. Check out my playlists and it will help you a lot. All right, so now I have my two products in this cup and I'm going to start adding my water to it to thin it down the rest of the way. So I'm not measuring as you see, I'm just going to pour some water in there. I'm going to mix it. Always start with less water if you're a new pour artist. Start with less water and test with the sheet, which I'll show you in a minute, before you uh, go dump a bunch of water in there, okay? Because paint does thin down pretty quickly once you start adding the water in. What you're looking for is the paint to flow off the stick and leave a, a small mound. Now, that's like way too thick. That's a big thick, fluffy mound. You don't want that, all right? So what you're looking for is this. Can you see the difference there? Flows off the stick and leaves just a mound and disappears, all right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a drop on my chart so that we can test this. And you don't have to do this with all of your colors. Do it with the first one, and then once you realize that it's at the right number, you can just kind of put some paint in a cup, add your products, and then feel it with the stick and see if it feels the same as your first one you mixed up that you know is right. Uh, test it with the looking at the mound, see if it looks the same. You don't have to test all of them. One is just fine. So here we go. I'm going to put a drop of paint and fill up that dot. Okay. Then I'm going to lift this up towards me and count to five. We want it to land somewhere around three. That's the consistency we need for the technique I did today. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, put it down. So I'm about at a two and a half to three. Now I can go ahead and add a little tiny bit more of water to this. All right, just a little bit. And get it to flow down to that number three. 
or I could use that to be honest with you because that would work for what I did today. I think a lot of people uh, worry about being exact because sometimes they're they're doing their art, art and it's not coming out the way they want it to and they think it's the paint's fault. <laughs> but a lot of times it's our fault. It's just we, we are uh, maybe all of the paints are not close in consistency or we're not moving the, the blow dryer the right way, you know, so... Keep that in mind. So let's try this again. All right. Pick it up. One, two, three, four, five. So that was pretty much right dead on three. Just adding that little bit more of water. So now that I mixed that up, I won't use this, okay? I will go ahead and just mix up the rest of my colors and make sure they feel and look exactly the same or very close to this one here. And here's the secret, my friends. Whether I add in double this amount or the amount that I put in here or even less, the paints are still gonna cause the same reactions it's that we're using more of this to make more volume, okay? We don't want to use a ton of water in our paints to thin it down. So when you have this bucket of paint here before you add anything into it and you go and add just say three tablespoons worth of this, sure, you can do that. It will work the same as it did today, but you're going to have to use a ton of water to make this much paint, and then what happens is your paints can start to crack. You're breaking down the binders in them. So that's why we like to use, you know, more of these products and less than less water. If that makes sense. I hope it makes sense. So I want to thank you for joining me today. If you enjoyed the video on the way out, remember to click the thumbs up button. Don't forget to subscribe if you are not subscribed already and make sure that notification bell is set to all. YouTube has that notification bell set to personalized if you click that bell for notifications. So you physically have to go in there, click on that bell and change it to the word all and then you'll get notified of all of my new releases. I always release on Sunday, 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Don't forget to check out Win Modern Art for their beautiful luxurious glitters and their beautiful new mix-ins that are half off. Plus, you get another 10% off using my code. All the information about the products that I use on this channel, the discount codes, ways to follow me on social media. I'm on Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, Facebook. I run a Facebook group, United We Pour Fluid Art Group. Come join our group and have a good time, okay? I love you all. Thank you so very much for joining me. And until the next time, happy pouring.